then. G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris here from Australia, aka Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Did you see the picture in the opening credits? That mountain, the lake, the water, the reflections, the colours. That's what I want to paint today, and I want to show you how to paint it, all right? So, back over here, look at those sizes. That's the size of the canvas I'm going to use, all right? And the colour of the paints, as normal, they're going up the screen there like that, so you can pause it and see what colours I'm using, or you can alter your values of shades or whatever you want to use, but similar. Same, same, but different. All right, and um, so we need, the main brushes I'm going to use is a flathead brush. Come over here, down here on my thing so I can show you a lot closer. Now, these are my brushes of preference for this type of picture. I like these flathead brushes. They're good for doing, if you're not so good with a knife, lines of white in the horizon line. And these are good for acrylic painters. As you know, mountains done in oils are done mainly with a knife and then blended down with a brush. But I find it myself easier with these flathead brushes. And I'm gonna use a two inch for applying the paint and my two inch blending brush that has split ends on it. So the ends are that little bit softer and it's beautiful for blending, okay? For those of you who are not in Australia, these brushes I can get out to you for 35 Australian dollars, okay? And you'll see in this video how they blend for me. Anyone within Australia, you can go to Bunnings and buy these yourself. I don't have to send them to you. All right, we'll get, I'll get you back down here and we'll get some colors on the board. There's my flowing white, and just next to this we'll have some retarder, clear medium retarder, because that's going to blend with this flowing white paint. See how soft and flowy that is? That's just to prime up my board. Now to get things started, I always like to give it a little bit of a wet, I'm not gonna wet this one too much. This is a reclaimed canvas. I used this canvas the other day in a demonstration on those blending brushes in a live video I did on Facebook. And if any of you want to contact me, add me on Facebook, message me there if you want to buy some brushes. Now we'll quickly get this on. I don't know why I'm saying quickly. There's no rush today. Today's Saturday. It's a great day to be Saturday painting. Get some more paint on there like that. Get some more retarder on there like that. Retarder is a clear medium you add to your acrylic paints. Some beginners aren't sure what mediums are. Mediums are products you add to your paint. Now we want a, no, a lot of nice blending. I want to put a bit more retarder with that. There we go. Mediums are products you mix and add to your acrylic paints, and there's so many different mediums. There's gessos, there's glaze, there's wax, there's retarders, there's, oh, there's all sorts of additives, they're additives. But instead of saying the word additive, they say the word medium. <laughs> have some crimson red the same applying brush I'm going to use I don't need to wash it because I want that red a bit lighter than what it is I'm just scraping the bulk of the paint off with my paper towel roll I need some retarder in that let's hope it don't go too pink but just enough lighter than what it is and plus the white paint on the board is going to lighten it up as well Alrighty, that's sort of the colour there. I'm finding it flip flop, flip flop. There we go. I found the colour I want. Now we're going to have maybe some of this here. So apply it onto your canvas roughly where you want it, somewhere there. And of course, the reflections in the water. You can do this an orange theme if you want. I'm just doing it the ready sunset sort of colours. Now put that down like a gentleman. 
the color of the sky, I want to use phalo blue, but I'm using a red shade. Because we've got red colors in the sky, a red shade of phalo blue will not hurt. And of course, some clear medium retarder for that phalo blue reddish tinge, because that is also going to blend into our sky there as well. All right, so we're pulling that into the, get a bit more in there. It's a bit of a sticky warm day today, so. I always wash my brushes after blending as well, people have been asking me. Now we'll, we'll put this blue on, and because we're rubbing it in, it's gonna bring, like you stamp it on, you get the solid color. When you rub it in, you're getting the white. So we're gonna sort of crisscross that and pick more up as you need it. Blend it into that red, or match it into that red there like so. Just like that. Get it right into there, and then come down for the watercolors. I've got a bit more white in there somewhere, just because I want to. All right, now we can pick up our blending brush and we'll blend those colors together now. So I'd like to start with the, with the red, blend that into the, the sky there first. So we're not contaminating it with the blue. Everything's on the board. We don't have to stop and start, okay? Wipe your brush as you go, it's important. Blend our red, get it soft and smooth. And then we'll start bringing it into the blue. See, and you know, I normally get the red into the blue, wipe my brush, and then I'll come with the blue back into there. Let's get some of this blue all blended as well, just so as it's not all brush stroked and yucky poo looking. Yeah, I can feel the climate today. It's a bit warm, so I'm gonna have to try and work a bit faster than normal here. Wipe your brush. I'll come into the red now and actually I'm going to put that down. Wash your brush. I've picked up another one and I want to blend that red into the blue there. Just so as we're not going to get too much of a messy colour. All right and we'll do the same down here. This is water actually, so I'm just gonna do it a bit more vigorously like so. Like that. There's the water there. And I'll pull it across like that. Now for my clouds, I wanna apply the paint. I'm using my fan brush. You can use a filbert brush. I'm using my fan brush. And I'm using my titanium structured white paint, which is a thicker body. Now I want a bit of um, distant clouds here, so I'm gonna put a bit on and blend. Look at that, there's some distant clouds there. Come in a little bit closer. Okay, maybe a little bit over this side. Just pushing it on however I can. I wanna have a bit of a bottom to these clouds. Wipe your blending brush. And get some of those clouds in there like that. It's looking good. It's picking up the pink, which has created the sunset in the sky. Now we'll probably have some over here jutting up. Wipe your blending brush. I want to keep some of this bottom now. I don't want to blend that into the atmosphere because these are out in the sky now. And of course, tickle the top of the Sweet Mary Ann's. Okay, one there. Get something on the other side maybe. 
If you twirl your brush like I did just then, you're picking up more shadow for your clouds. So we'll blend the middle to the bottom down, but keeping the bottom on. There we go, keep the bottom on. Wipe your brush, because it's full of paint. And tickle the tops of them. Not too much. Okay, we got that done. I've washed my fan brush. I'm picking up some more of that paint. And I'll just want something maybe in the front coming out this way. Pick up your blending brush. Leave the top of that. Blend some of the body of the cloud. Leave a bit of a bottom on it though. We're not going into the atmosphere. That'll do. How's that looking in the monitor? That's all right. And we'll do something a bit on the other side just to sink that one down see i've gone and made a bit of a an even pattern here but it's a piece of art it doesn't matter art can be good or bad and art's like the beauty is in the eye of the beholder if you think it's great it's great if you don't like it you don't have to like it not everything has to be liked here now i'm just gonna i want to sort of get a bit of red back in there because I feel I've lost a bit just I've just stamped it on like that see and I'll blend actually I'll get one of my smalling blending blending brushes the little one inch one and we'll blend some of that red back just tickle it tease it there we go look at that some of it's in the bottom of those clouds there How's that looking? That's fine, I'm quite happy enough with that. Just to finish it off, that little one inch brush, I'm just stabbing into the textured white, knocking it off. And I might put some, what are they called, cumulus? Something up here, blending out into the distance. Wipe that brush, wipe the hell out of it. Wash his hands and blend that into that blue. It'll die down a bit, but that's what we want. We don't want nothing too brutal out here. Or you could I'd choose not to do this little bit here that I'm doing, but it's just adding that. I'm gonna to have to look up the name of clouds, cumulus and cumulus and all those sort of clouds. Alrighty then, we're just about finished with this reflection and blending bit. So now we're going to just get some of these colours adopted into the water there like that. It's still all wet, some sort of, and we mainly want a lot of glare out in the background. Okay. Then we'll grab our blending brush and blend those through. Long sweeps or blend those clouds to you're happy with the way they look in your reflection there. I'm happy with that. Alrighty, how are we all feeling? This is the part now where we can blow dry this and we can start incorporating the mountain and the foreground and a bit of detail, okay? So that's a good thing. We've done all the blending. I've washed my brushes and this can be dried because if we just try and paint over there and some bits are wetter than others and you're putting a dark color on, it's gonna drag it and it's gonna annoy you and you're gonna go, oh, and you don't wanna do that, all right? So I'm gonna dry that. All right, this part here, you're gonna need your flathead brush, maybe one or two, depending on the size. And I'm going to use some black gesso. Now, I'm not going to bother putting this onto the palette. I'll just show you a little trick, all right? It's in the drum, it's in the tub. Shake it upside down, turn it back. And you have enough in your lid, all right? So I'm going to whack that there. I'll grab a thingity bob and we want to put our mountain somewhere here. All right, I've got me gesso in the lid there. Now, you can draw out your mountain or you can just do it freehand and use this brush to get your nice sharp details of your mountain, okay? 
stop. I haven't dried so much the bottom half because I'd like to get some reflection in here later. So we're just going to bring this mountain down. It's not a great big one because we're going to have a lot of other things in the way as well. And we'll bring him out to about there. There, so we'll, we'll pull that down just like so. So we're not using a knife in this acrylic. Now I'm, I'm finding my horizon line with this as well, which is I want it about there. And we're gonna put that all dark. That's gonna add value to our horizon line up there because this mountain's gonna be covered as you saw in the opening credit picture with some stuff in front there. So block that in best way you feel comfortable. There's no right way or wrong way, so long as when it's done, you're happy with the finish. We'll get that out there. We're gonna have some foreground in there. That can just stay like that for now. Okay, I've grabbed a smaller flathead brush now, and I'm picking up some of the titanium white, the good quality thick structure white. You can put a little bit of blue in it if you want. And we're going to put some ice caps over this mountain here, so just This is a distant mountain pick up some more white and we'll get it Roll your brush This is real easy for beginners All right, you've done that all right, it doesn't look that great at the moment. But now I'm gonna grab a smaller blending brush, a very small one. And I just wanna merge that into that there, just like so. You're breaking it up, you're turning it into a distant mountain. A lot of this is gonna be hidden. It's just the main detail you wanna see. Now I've dried that, I'm picking up some more white. You can see I've sort of, I wanted some blended dull colors. And then we're gonna pick up the white and make our snow come down the mountain the way we want. Okay, just like that, it's not that hard. And we'll probably put a bit here. And uh, I don't know, something over there. I've dried that, I don't know if I just told you that, but I'm telling you again. I've dried it so it's not going to mud up like the first layer did, but I wanted the first layer to mud up. It's all right. And there we go. Now my phalo blue with the reddish tinge, I've put a little bit of the black gesso in there and some of the white just to get this tone here on my brush. Okay. And we want to come in. I've dried that mountain again putting the line about there where I want it. This is very distant and then we'll continue over here. Stamp it on. I've dried it but I don't want to really push too hard and kill what I've done. Bring it down to the horizon there somewhere like that. We're just mapping this distant blue in. Now I'm getting a bit more on my brush and now I'm just going to put some tops over here in the distance. Look at that. Can you see them? We're just breaking up. Just very small, just so it's not a, a flat line that was made in a factory, you know. You don't want it looking like the painting was done in a factory. I have some forest green and sap green. So the first darker color I want to use forest green. I'm using a smaller fan brush so as I can get some lines like that. And I'm also going to use my small little brush here as well. So now we've got those trees. These are going to have tops on them here somewhere. Just sort of coming up that blue a bit in a different way. Okay, 
and we can put some of that just down under there down under there grab yourself a pull down brush now and pull something down like so you picked up your sap green and then you're getting in between there now leaving some dark I might come back and put some dark in there but this is just in the distance still get them there like that I'll get that down there I'll pick up a little bit of I want to get some of this dark back in there so I can pull it down in the water there we go look at that I'll wipe that brush because I want to get some of the um, sap green back where it belongs. We've lost some of it. There we go. Now pull it down. Just careful because that's wetter now. That's it. I wouldn't mind poking some of the um, white and a bit of the, uh, where are we, somewhere here, just to create the mountain shadow. Don't forget it's a long way away, so we're not needing a massive reflection there. Dancing those two greens back and we'll get that pulled down as well. All right, and that should do it. Into that mountain, there we go. Keep your line straight, beautiful, love it. It's almost coffee time. And pull that across as well. I just noticed a bit of this blue out of the reflection isn't quite there and that's got to be there otherwise it's just going to look wrong so I'll quickly put that in and pull that down as well otherwise the reflection doesn't add up all right as you can see we're getting there the mountain's been built and uh, this is the, the the coffee time so actually I really wish I had a coffee right now there you go you wish for something and you shall get it anyway we're gonna put some beautiful uh, the rest of the horizon coming towards the front of this on pull it down and we we're just about finished So it's not taken that long take this time to subscribe to my channel on my little head in the corner down there I will leave a link Oh, you gotta love your coffee man. I will leave a link to my Facebook page that way you can contact me there through messages and um, I'll answer you when I have time. And if you want to buy these brushes, if you're outside of Australia, let me know. And I'll also leave a link to my Patreon page where those people who want to become a patron can become a patron and pledge and help support my content. All right, now we're going to use the same colours, the sap green and the forest green here. And maybe... Uh, we could tone it down a little bit or like give it some luster, maybe with some white or yellow, I don't know. See how we go. Um, all right, let's get into it. Now I'm using another two inch brush. See this one, it's got a very small surface area and it's quite stubborn. That's what I want to stamp on all these in the sap green. So I'll get it in my brush first, one side and the other side. Keep it a bit wet. You want it a bit wet so as it's going to transfer better and then you stab it like this. And we're coming across here now and we're going to go the, the top and bottom at the same time just like that. I've used the corner of the brush, pick up more paint, make sure your brush is damp to make it transfer. I've used the corner of the brush like that, 
and I've come up and down like that and now I'm coming along and I want to get let's just concentrate on the tops first like there and then bring the bottom down into the water like that all right wasn't too hard and what I'll do I'll sharpen the brush up just so I can put a bit of a stick there and a stick there all right now grab your pull down brush where's our horizon line there pull it down that'll do it now we'll do the other side because we've got that color on the brush so we're coming across here up and down up and down up and down up and down I'll do the top and then I'll come back in with the bottom come on bottom more on there make this a real big one yeah get it in there don't muck around when you want to do something if you want to do something just do it there we go now grab your pull down brush where's our horizon line there it is there continue on pull down Now I've just dried this and we're going to pick up the sap green now. Uh, I'm just changing the brush just because I want to with my fan brush. So I'm going to come along here and then get keep the colours into the water as well. That way wherever you go with shadows and whatnot like that. Look at that, see? Grab your pull down brush. You're pulling that into the sap green, I mean the forest green there. See what we just did? Let's do the other side. So I'm creating a shadow there, so it'll transpond into the water there like that. Just like that. Find your horizon line and pull those greens down into there as well okay now with the sap green I haven't even cleaned my brush I'm picking up some of the titanium white let's just see just a little bit just to give it a just that little bit of luster now we'll create some other little uh, bushes that are distinctively in front of that just like so Follow your reflections into the water. Put that down and grab your pull down brush and carefully pull them down. All oh, this, look at that. We'll do the same on the other side. Let's say, not too much, just trinkle there. Stop as you go if you need to. Okay, now in my opinion, and a lot of other artists' opinions that think like me, we need to give this some depth and darken it up along this horizon line. So just the littlest bits here and there, break it up, come down, put bits of shadow in. Like this. And that line that you're putting on there, Quickly pull that down so you'll see what I mean. Right in the middle of that black, you want to pull down. Just like that. Adjust your paint so it's not too wet but not too stiff as well. And we are putting bits of depth in there. Pull it down as you go. And see how the black comes down into there? It just it adds that sense of um, depth and value that you need in a painting. Halfway, halfway and down. See what it's done? I love it. And then when we kiss that with white, 
it looks really good. So we're just sort of going up and down here. Oh, I don't want that letter H looking like a letter H there. And we'll quickly pull that down. Do a bit at a time, because if it dries on you, you're not going to get that smear through it the way you like, okay? And you can see that's just added some more depth. All right, grab yourself a knife or a brush that you're confident with in getting a nice, thin, sharp line. And I'm using this little tiny fan brush. You can use those little flathead brushes as well. I call those sort of brushes beauties. That's because they can do beautiful things. And we want to get some lines here, but not don't just do a big, thick, solid line. Try and imagine the way it should go. Crissing against the shore there. I don't know, something like that. And then something similar to the other side. Come on. Then, we can get some lines and sink some of these reflections down. Try and make them as thin as possible. Oh, look at that big, thick one. Okay. Grab yourself your flathead brush and then get those and sort of sit them down with there we go any that looked a bit too bossy and proud sit them back at the back of the bus and we'll create the sheen on top of the water try and keep these straight though i've got everything in my way my palette and paint <clears throat> yeah certain bits you can use this brush see there and just sort of tone them down a bit Turn them down, that's it. Keep them straight though. Now I'll use my fan brush, pick up some more paint. I'm feeling quite brave now because I've got that other brush in my hand. So we'll put some of this on there like that. Pick up this brush and sit them down. Because this is just a big lake, it's not the ocean. There we go, and we've created some different values in the water there. Just in the very middle front horizon line there, I want to get a big, I need my leaning on her. I want to get... something quite proud there just like that it's sort of picking up that mountain glare that'll do it all right now we're just going to put a foreground in there and i want to use sap green and yellow green just something to brighten up the front of it then we'll put a signature and a frame on it all right so what brush can i use i want something scratchy and giddy up there sort of thing all right i've got one here this is a a wider fan brush it's quite hog bristly so it's stiff i'll pick that up in the sap green Get over here so you can see what I'm doing. Let's just try a bit here. <clears throat> That's it. Perfect. Oh, don't go too big. Let's pull this out a bit. So I can get there. Now we want to sort of scratch this up. That's it. Scratch it up. 
just like that. Let's solid in the bottom first so it doesn't look naked and empty. Just like that. And use your artistic mind to scratch it up like that into there. This needs to be a little bit wet, not too wet, but enough wet to get all those sharp bits up there, okay? That's looking all right, simple and easy. We'll use the same one and pick up the yellow green and we'll get some sort of highlights on that as well, but nothing too. There we go, just something artistic and scratchy. That'll do it, don't overdo it. Now I'm picking up the littlest of black on that brush just to get some black values in there to create some of its depth, just here and there. <laughs> All right, we've got the foreground there. We'll just whack a signature on this somewhere over here. I've dried the paint to a degree so it won't interfere with me paint pen, but I didn't dry it enough. All right, let's put a frame on her or him and see how she looks. Okay, we got our distant mountain. We've got some horizon shoreline trees, a bit of foreground at the front here, some beautiful sweeping clouds. That's not too shabby, eh? All right, I hope you like this little beginner's exercise here, brought to you by me and my little pet cat, Steve, all right? Now, if you like something that I've done or what I've done today, you tell a friend, but if you don't, tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.